What is up guys, Cac Armory here, and today was an absolutely massive day for Destiny 2. Bungie released a Vidoc video fully outlining and revealing the new Black Armory expansion, which launches very soon on December 4th. As well, we shifted from Season 4 to Season 5 today, and some of the new Pinnacle weapons are earnable in-game right now. And previously, I made a video covering the information unveiled about the Black Armory in the Vidoc, as well as a bunch of additional information, including the actual in-game screens of brand new exotic weapons and a bunch of that stuff. If you guys haven't seen that, I would highly recommend checking it out. It's linked up above. However, I'm bringing this up because the first thing I want to address in this video is that I referred to the new raid content as a raid layer. And there's a very good reason for that because in previous roadmaps, as you can see right here, Bungie themselves was referring to the raid content of the annual pass expansions as raid layers. However, today, they seem to have dropped the layer term and are just referring to it as raids. A new raid is launching on this day. Well, that day is December 7th. But yet again, the in-game like tooltip has raid layer. So you have raid layer being referred to in some places and raid being referred to in other places. What the heck is this raid content we're getting? Well, thanks to DestinyRoundup.com tracking down an interview with PS Lifestyle, Deej, community manager at Bungie, actually clarified what the heck is going on. Because it does matter. A raid layer is a smaller piece of content. It's got less loot. I mean, the other raid layers only had two raid weapons as rewards and stuff like that. A raid is much bigger, more rewards. It really does matter what they're referring to this content as. And Deej says... This next raid is something that takes place in a brand new setting. It's actually in the last city on Earth. It's a place you've never been able to explore and fight. And we're sending you in headfirst to confront the biggest challenges and earn the best rewards that we have in the game. Raids come in different shapes and sizes. What you'll be playing will be much larger than a raid layer, but not as large in scope and size as The Last Wish, which was the biggest raid we've ever created. It's an activity that we feel is deserving of the word raid, especially because it happens in a completely new location. All right, so there you have it, and that is some fantastic news. So adjust your expectations accordingly. This is going to be a bigger piece of content than we've seen compared to something like the Eater of Worlds or the Spire of Stars raid layer. Alright, now moving on from there, the rest of the video is going to focus on the brand new update that arrived and is live in Destiny 2 right now. Here are the changes it brought. First off, with supers, Chaos Reach. They fixed an issue in which having multiple Chaos Reach beams active at one time caused their visual effects to merge together. They fixed an issue to allow Chaos Reach beams to penetrate friendly banner shields they fixed an issue in which Chaos Reach did not damage Taken Blights, and changes to Chaos Reach cancellation will come by the next update, Destiny 2 update 1.2.1, scheduled for December 4th. Now, they talked about this in a previous update. Essentially, they're going to make it so that if you do cancel your Chaos Reach, it's actually going to matter. Right now, unless you cancel it like almost immediately, you don't get any super energy back. So they're going to make it so that even if you cancel it kind of near the end, you're still going to get a little bit of super energy back. Next up, Nova Warp. Fixed an issue in which Nova Warp would sometimes fail to detonate on release. For the Sentinel, fixed an issue in which Sentinel shields and banner shields would lose energy when guarding near friendly detonations, most notably Thundercrash. With the Spectral Blades, this is kind of a big one. Retuned the Spectral Blade Super to increase the reliability of melee attacks in PvP and bolster the effectiveness of this super's stealth capabilities. So, Spectral Blades got a straight buff. Definitely worth checking out, especially in PvP. With the Burning Maul, they decreased the camera shake and screen flash on hit in an attempt to alleviate feelings of motion sickness when using this super. Thundercrash adjusted the camera during flight sequence in an attempt to alleviate feelings of motion sickness, same thing. Moving on from there, Exotic Armor. Fixed an issue in which Ophidian Aspect was not increasing the melee range on various Warlock uh, charged melees. 
igniting touch, ball lightning, entropic pull, etc. So if you are using that setup, definitely worth trying again. Fix an issue in which buffs granted by Lunafaction boots would last for only 15 seconds inside Well of Radiance rather than the entire duration. Oh my goodness, that seems like a little thing right there, that little note, but that is huge. Because right now, if you're doing a damage phase with the Well of Radiance and the user has Lunafaction boots, you're gonna be shooting, shooting, shooting up to that 15 second mark and you're gonna have to start reloading. And this especially impacts Scenarios where you put down a well of radiance in preparation for a damage phase, perhaps you're tanking nearby ads and so on, and you can really screw over your team if it lasts that 15 second gap and then they have to reload. So this is actually a pretty substantial buff. This will matter quite a bit in several damage phases. Next up, fix an issue on the Ursa Furiosa so that super gain from guarding is more consistent between PvE and PvP. Now moving on from there, we have weapons. And we actually do see some weapon changes that could matter. So for the Warden's Law, now that is the Nightfall exclusive pistol for the Warden of Nothing Strike. So they replaced perks on the Warden's Law that did not function properly with the weapon's archetype because this weapon is really high damage and it'll actually shoot two bullets at once every time you press the trigger really close together. So triple tap replaced with Feeding Friends fourth times the charm replaced with zen moment warden's law now has bullet contrails and lastly updated the intrinsic perk text on warden's law to distinguish it from aggressive burst sidearms moving on from there for high impact scout rifles they actually got their damage increased by 1.87 percent and the reason being is because if you had very high resilience you could tank three headshots from high impact scouts this small damage buff makes that impossible. If you get three headshots with this archetype, it'll always kill an enemy in the Crucible. Now, another important thing about scout rifles, a fix that will return high impact scout rifles to 150 rounds per minute is planned for the December 4th update. So be checking scouts on that day. Now for shotguns, this is kind of a big one, guys. This is gonna impact a lot of players. So firstly, rapid fire frame on shotguns now increases the reload of all shotgun shells when empty instead of just the first shell. So that's a buff, but trench barrel. Now this was the unique perk on the escalation shotgun where if you got a melee, it would increase your damage for a certain period of time, but that period of time was long enough that you could tank all eight rounds, getting that massive damage bonus. The Escalation Shotgun is arguably the best special weapon in PvE right now. So, Trench Barrel perk now deactivates after three shots. And Trench Barrel description updated to reflect new behavior and also fix an error where it called out increased accuracy instead of increased reload speed. So, Escalation Shotgun has been nerfed and that's very unfortunate like a lot of builds revolved around this shotgun a lot of strategies revolved around the amount of damage this shotgun can output however the you know the light of this nerf is that hopefully we will get more variety because it was kind of a no-brainer to use the escalation shotgun for so many things if you did get it and another light at the end of the tunnel is that during the vidoc one of the shotguns that they revealed that was a part of the black armory weapons had trench barrel as a perk so it looks like just like box breathing where it was a unique perk and it was added into the loot pool for a bunch of weapons that's also going to happen with trench barrel so you'll be able to get random black armory shotguns that come with trench barrel and that's actually pretty exciting three shots is still going to be a considerable damage increase but of course nowhere near what it once was. Moving on from there, submachine guns. They slightly increase the range on submachine guns, so straight buff to what sounds like every SMG in the game. Machine guns slightly increase the accuracy on machine guns, uh, as if the uh, Thunderlord wasn't good enough, just got a little bit of a buff. Now some exotic weapon changes here. Prometheus Lens, damage increased by 10%. So straight buff on that weapon, definitely check it out. Hard Light. Fix an issue where hard light could over penetrate an enemy banner shield. I wish they didn't fix that. That seems like a really cool exotic capability of the hard light. And you know, the hard light doesn't really have a reason to use other than this little niche scenario. Now, Ace of Spades, this is interesting. 
the Momento Mori reduced to five bullets. Now that is the perk that gives you higher damaging rounds after you reload after getting a kill. So you're not gonna get as many bullets as before, you're gonna get five, but this perk can now be refreshed on reload without having to get rid of all the bonus damage bullets. So kind of a nerf, kind of a buff, you know, it's definitely a change to the Ace of Spades, worth trying it out now. Now, moving on from there, there is a ton more changes, but I'm not gonna go over all of them. A lot of them are kind of simple bug fixes. Some of the highlights, Mayhem as a mode is being added back to the Crucible as a 6v6 rotating playlist with scoring to support the brand new Forsaken Supers. So fans of Mayhem rejoice it is coming back. Another change worth mentioning is that Valor and Glory are now subdivided into three sub ranks similar to Gambit. So just like how Gambit, when you go up one full rank and you're gonna get powerful gear for reaching those main ranks, but along the way, you're going to level up those subcategories and just get normal gear. That same exact thing is coming to Valor and Glory this time. So you're just gonna earn a lot more rewards along the way when you level up these rankings. Another big change is that if you're in a clan, you no longer need to be rank four in order to accept the challenge bounties for the last wish raid. So you can go out and get those regardless of your rank, complete them, uh, get your triumphs done and also get raid rewards. And that's really it for the main changes that came with this update. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, learned something new. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. And if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.